In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of how you can make Chikaku puzzles using the puzzle generator in PowerPoint. Now, the first thing you want to do is open PowerPoint and have a blank slide here. So if you do have any text boxes or placeholders, please delete them. And then the next thing we're going to do is again, make sure we're on the puzzle generator tab here, and then we're going to choose our trim size. So you can choose any trim size here but I'm going to go for 8.5 by 11. And then once you've done that, click Puzzles, and then Shikaku. And then we have our first screen here, which is for our game explanation or how to. This is just a, a brief text, how to play the puzzle or game. If you want to, you can edit it by clicking in and typing or deleting anything. And then if you want to include the explanation, just tick the box here. If you don't, untick it and then click continue. Now our first option here is to is for our color picker. So this gives us the option to choose the color of our headers text initially. Now if you're creating for KDP, it's likely that you want this to be a black or gray. I'm going to leave it on the default of black. Our next option here is our blocks borders color. Now what this does, this is for the solution pages where it shows us our uh, solutions and our blocks of numbers. What color do you want the blocks to be in? So again, if you're creating for KDP, it's likely that you want it to be in a black or a gray color. I'm gonna keep it on the default of black. Our next option here is for our header font. So here you can select any font you have in Office or if you've added any custom ones in the export tool, you can select them here. You can select the size and some styling, bold and italic as well. And then our next option here is for our grid title. So that's what appears above every single puzzle. So with grid, it'll be grid one, grid two, grid three, four, five, and so on and so forth. You can, of course, change this or translate it. You can have Shikaku or grid in a different language, it's completely up to you. Our next option here is to start our numbering app. Now, typically, and in most circumstances, you'd want this at one, but say, for example, you created 20 puzzles and then you decided you wanted to create another 20 puzzles, you could start this at 21, and then it would create 21, 22, 3, 4, and so on. And this would keep your puzzles in number order. Our next option here is for our grid, let's change it back to one, is for our grid dimensions. Now, the larger the grid, the more difficult the puzzle will be. And also, the larger the grid, the fewer amount of grids per page you can have. So if I start with four by four here, you can see I can have one, two, four, six puzzles. Again, I can have six, six by six, I can have six, seven by seven, I can have six, eight by eight, I can have six, nine by nine by six, and then 10 onwards, I can only have two grids per page. In this example, I'm gonna stick with four by four and do six grids per page. Our next option here is for uh, is page number. That's how many page numbers worth of puzzles do you want to create? In this example, I'm just gonna do five. And it's worth noting as well that the amount of grids by page you choose, you'll have the same amount of solutions as well. So if you choose six grids, six puzzles per page, you'll have six solutions per page, four, then you have four solutions um, per page and so on. Now, our next option here is to hide titles. Now, where that might come in useful, I'm gonna come back to a little bit later. So just ignore that option for now. Our next option is to set our block borders. Uh, this is for the thickness, basically. So you can choose um, three, four, five, or six. Typically, um, I just leave this on the thickest setting. And what this is, is in the solutions, 
basically the walls that um, separate the blocks in the grid. But you'll see that in a moment. Now our final option here is to add a left and right margin. Now if you're creating for KDP, this is pretty essential. This allows you to have a blank space on the left and the right side. And here you can choose between zero and one inch. Typically I do a 0.75. But now we've got our um, settings. Let's create our shikakus. Then we have our puzzles and then our solution. So this is the this is the block wall I was talking about earlier. You can of course, like I said, change the color or the thickness of it. We have all our solutions too. Now once you've created your um, your puzzles, you do have a few more advanced formatting options. For example, if you wanted to change the uh, the font size of the of the titles, you can do so. All you do is select them here like this. Click change individual fonts here. And then here you have the option to change the color, the font, the size. Let's do a 26. A bold, italic, underline, and also the alignment, and click OK. Now what that does, it applies your changes to all the titles all the way through, including your solutions. And now a final formatting option that you might like to use, which you might find useful, is the movement, the movement tool. So again, if we select our titles because they're a little bit close here what we can do is put a distance in here and then we can move them up down left or right so I'm just going to move them up quickly like so but again this change applies all the way through your puzzles including the solutions as well now what I'm going to show you now is how you can have a custom amount of puzzles and solutions per slide by using the bulk import and export tool. So what we're going to do, we're just going to delete all our slides here. We're going to tap to add a blank first slide. We're going to delete our placeholders here. Like so, and then what we're going to do, we're going to choose a square trim size here. So I'm going to go for 8.5 by 8.5. We're going to go back into puzzles, choose Shikaku, and then what we're going to do here is we're going to remove the left and right margin. So untick that. We're going to change the grids by page down to one. We're going to hide the titles. And again, you'll know why that's useful a little bit later. And then for this example, I'm going to create, let's do six by six. And I'm going to create 40 pages worth, so 40 puzzles. Once we've got our settings, click OK. And now our puzzles are created. What we're going to do is at the top here, select Export Slides as PNG. Now what we want to do for the first export, we're going to do 1 to 40 because that's just the puzzles. So if I type puzzle in here, I'm going to keep the quality and resolution the same. Click OK. And then I'm going to create a folder on the C drive. And in this folder, create a folder called puzzles. And then click OK on that. And now I'm going to repeat the same, but for the solutions. So again, I'm going to go export slides as PNG. 
but this time our first slide is going to be 41. Put solutions in here again, keep the quality and the resolution the same. And then I'm going to select the same folder again. Put in here, create a folder called solutions and place them in there. Now that's done, what we want to do is delete all our slides here. Tap to add a first slide, delete these placeholders again. And then we want to select the trim size we want to have for our final KDP book. So I'm gonna go for 8.5 by 11. You can of course choose any size here. And then what we want to do is at the top here, we want to click on bulk import images. And then we want to make sure we're in the folder we created. And then we want to go into puzzles and click OK. Now, as you can see here, the bulk import tool gives you a lot more selection as to the amount of images or puzzles you can have per page, all the way from one up to 20. So for this example, if I do eight, and then here we can add a title above every image. Now, if you remember on the Shikaku settings, I hid the title. This is because I can set the title here. And by setting it here, it will remain a text box rather than part of the image. That means if I then want to change the sizing or the formatting afterwards, I still can. And then down the bottom here, we can set minimum margins and spacing. I typically leave this um, at the default and just tick attempt to optimize spacing because this seems to give the best results with the puzzles um, tightly knit together. So once you've done all your settings there, click OK. And as you can see, I have eight Shikaku puzzles per page. And then the next thing we want to do, we want to go to bulk import again, but this time select our solutions. Now here, again, you do not have to choose the same number um, as you did for the puzzles. You can choose any number here. I'm gonna go with 20. I'm gonna change the text here to solution. Keep everything else exactly the same and then click OK. And there are my solutions, 20 per page. So as you can see, using the bulk import and export tools gives you a lot more power and a lot more flexibility over the amount of puzzles you can have per page and solutions you can have per page. I hope this quick overview of the Shikaku feature of the puzzle generator helps you get started. Thanks for watching.